Welcome. Today I want to talk to you about stopping distances and night driving. In order for you to stop a vehicle at six, from 60 miles an hour to zero, it takes a predetermined distance. I have on the screen for you some testing from the Michigan State Police where they tested SUVs and sedans on a flat, dry track, asphalt track. And you can see the stopping distances range from 128 feet to about 139 feet. This is based on physics. It does not matter how good a driver you are. It does not matter if you get the driving award for your city every single year. Your car, your truck, your heavy vehicle takes a predetermined amount of distance to stop at a given speed. It's physics. It has nothing to do with your driving ability. How do we come up with these distances? Just to sort of help you understand this and convert miles per hour into feet per second, let's take a look at the slide that's in front of you now and talk about this. There are 60 seconds in a minute and there's 60 minutes in an hour, which means that there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. There is 5,280 feet in a mile. If we take 5,280 feet and divide it by the 3,600 seconds, we come up with a number called a constant, or 1.47. 1.47 is a hard number for you to deal with, so I say round it up to 1.5. That makes it easy for you. For example, if your car or truck is traveling at 10 miles per hour, it is traveling 15 feet per second. In other words, at 10 miles an hour, every second your car travels 15 feet. At 50 miles an hour, your car or truck is traveling at 75 feet per second. And at 60 miles an hour, your car or truck is traveling at 90 feet per second. In coordination with how long it takes you to stop, we need to talk about perception reaction time a bit. The standard perception reaction time for daylight driving is about one and a half seconds. In other words, I'm driving down the road, I see a small child dribbling a basketball out in front of my vehicle. It takes me about one and a half seconds to recognize that object as a child with a basketball and get my foot to the brake and begin stopping. Highly trained drivers can get under one second. If you'll think back to NASCAR and some of the other professional drivers, it's amazing how close they can get to another car and still avoid an accident. But those folks are not the folks you deal with every day on the road. So the 1.5 seconds is what we'll primarily use today with our numbers. Now, sudden and unexpected occurrences can really increase your per perception reaction time. Sleep deprivation, the type of food you eat, nighttime driving scenarios, all these things can have a huge effect on your perception reaction times. The other thing that can affect your perception reaction time is the angle from which the object comes. The further the angle comes from your peripheral, the larger your perception reaction time. We see clearest straight in front of us. It's called the foveal cone, and that's where we see the clearest. So as the object will come from a further angle, it makes it more difficult for us to see and react. Obviously, alcohol use, drug use, lack of sleep, those type of things can all affect your perception reaction time. I'm showing you a slide right now to give you an idea about how this all works. If you'll notice the slide, and it's got a lot of fancy things on it you can sort of gloss over, but pay attention to these things. We're looking at recognition of one object straight ahead of us on a straight road during daylight hours. If you look at the very bottom of the, of the slide, under the average PRT, average perception response time, the average person has a response time of 1.6 seconds. This is based on a study of 10,000 people. You'll notice further to the right that 15% of the driving population has a perception response time of greater than 2.2 seconds. 2.2 seconds. This slide is the exact same scenario except it's nighttime. We have a response to one object. We have an object straight in front of us on a straight road, except this time it's at night. You'll notice that the perception reaction time for the average person goes up to about 1.8 seconds. Most people in the industry generally use two seconds. You'll notice that 15% of the population has a perception response time that's greater than 2.4 seconds. 
So let's put some of these numbers into a practical scenario and talk about how far it takes you to stop. Using a perception response time of 1.5 seconds at a speed of about 55 miles an hour, your vehicle is traveling about 80 feet every second as it goes down the road. In other words, in one and a half seconds, it will travel 120 feet. If the child dribbling the basketball is less than 120 feet from you, when you see it and you're driving 55 miles an hour, there's a very, very high possibility you're going to hit the child. Now, once you apply the brakes, there's a predetermined amount of time and distance that it takes your vehicle to stop at a given speed. In our particular example, at 55 miles an hour, on a flat, dry, asphalt surface, your pickup truck or sedan is gonna take about 126 feet to come to a stop. About 126 feet. So if we add the 120 foot of perception reaction time, and we add the slide to stop distance of 126 feet, the total distance to stop your vehicle at 55 miles an hour is about 246 feet, almost the length of a football field. I'd like for you to think about this the next time you decide to tailgate somebody on a crowded roadway. How far does it take your big truck to stop? You drive a dump truck, you drive a sanitation truck. The Braking percentage on a large vehicle is only about 60% as good as on a passenger vehicle. So if we use our example of 55 miles per hour and our one and a half second perception response time, we still go 120 feet before we get our foot on the brake valve. However, it takes us about 240 feet to come to a stop once we apply the brakes on the large vehicle. So our total stopping time and our total stopping distance is about 360 feet, almost 120 feet further than the passenger car. How far does it take your big truck to stop on a wet road? Our perception reaction time at 55 miles an hour is going to be the same, 120 feet. But because the roadway is wet, the friction coefficient between the tires and the road surface is much worse. So it's going to take a much longer distance for us to come to a stop will actually take about 403 feet to bring a big truck at 55 miles per hour on a wet road to a stop. If we add our perception and reaction time of 120 feet to that number, that means to stop that big dump truck on a wet road at 55 miles an hour is gonna take you approximately 523 feet, almost the length of two football fields. Please consider that when you drive that big truck in inclement weather. Let's talk about headlight illumination distances. The particular slide that I have for you now shows how effective your retro reflective clothing is at nighttime. If you're standing on the right shoulder of the road, a normal vehicle driving down the road is going to be able to cast enough light on you to make you visible from a distance of about 500 feet. 500 feet. That's the value of wearing the retro reflective vest. Now, Let's assume that you don't have a vest on, but you're wearing a white shirt or a light pastel colored shirt. You can still be seen by headlights on the right shoulder about 400 feet away. If you'll notice the yellow coloring on the diagram, you'll see that most of the shade of yellow goes to the right side of the road. The federal government requires that headlights point down and to the right about a half a degree so that the majority of the headlight illumination goes to the right side of the road not the left. That's to cut down on glare from approaching vehicles. Now, if you're wearing moderate colored clothing, something like I've got on today, or a medium colored color of shirt, uh, you're probably visible for about 250 feet away from the right shoulder of the road. And you'll notice that that number is in concert with the federal government requirement that your low beams must shine out to 250 feet. Now, 250 feet sounds like a lot of distance, but let's go back to our example. You're going 55 miles an hour, so you're going about 80 feet per second. It's nighttime. It takes you about two seconds to perceive and react. You've already gone 160 feet before you ever put your foot on the brake. You've only got 250 feet till you reach the item that you've just seen. 
So now we're down to a very small amount of space in which to get stopped or swerve and avoid. The worst case scenario, of course, is someone, someone wearing dark or camouflaged or black colored clothing, such as navy blue, dark brown, black, camouflage. You're visible from about 115 feet away if you're standing on the right shoulder of the road. To put that in context, let's go back to our example of you're traveling 55 miles an hour down the roadway. So you're traveling 80 feet per second. It takes you two seconds to see that object and react to it. So you've got 160 feet. Unfortunately, you could only see the object when you were within 115 feet of it, which means what? It means you've hit that person before you ever attempt to swerve or hit your brakes. Here's some nighttime visibility photos that I want to show you and go over with you. You'll notice that there's disability glare and oncoming headlight glare from oncoming headlights in this particular picture. And I ask you, can you see a person in that picture? You've had about 15 or 20 seconds to look at that picture. I'll show you another one. This is from dash cam, so we're getting closer and closer to the scene of an accident. Again, I ask you, can you see a pedestrian anywhere in that picture? I think by now, this third slide, you can start to see a pedestrian emerging from the center of the highway. You'll notice that the pedestrian is coming from left to right. And if you'll remember a previous module, we talked about the fact that at highway speeds, if a pedestrian comes from your left to your right, by the time they enter the headlight illumination profile of your vehicle, it's already too late and there's about a 95% chance you're going to hit them. As you can see from this picture, the collision is imminent. This person was killed in this accident. The police officer was traveling 65 miles an hour in a 35 mile per hour zone with no emergency equipment operating. He was fired from his job and he's currently facing one year in jail. When this accident happened, he got on the radio and he said that he'd hit something, but he didn't know what. He got out and began looking around and found a shoe, but he could not find a person. About 15 minutes later, as other units pulled up on the scene, one of the fellow officers was walking around the involved officer's police car and noticed the lady in the back seat. She had been vaulted over the car and went down through the back window into the back seat and was deceased. These nighttime accidents are horrendous. These nighttime accidents are serious. And these nighttime accidents can happen to you even if you're driving the speed limit. I would ask you if you see anyone in this particular photograph. I'll tell you that you can see the outline of the road up down at the bottom right corner of the picture. I'll tell you the speed limit is 35 miles per hour on this road. And I'll tell you that there's someone in that picture, but can you see them? If you could see them, this is the distance you'd need to be from them to avoid an accident. Do you see anyone now? What's the first thing you noticed? And I'm sure all of you have told me white shoes. Yes, that's the first thing you usually notice in this particular picture. But I've shown you the previous picture, and I've shown you this picture, and I've been talking to you about it for 30 seconds. How many have seen the second person in this picture? Yes, if you look to your right of the white shoes, there's a small female dressed in dark blue standing beside the male that was hit by the car. These are actual photos that were reconstructed with, an involved, with the involved vehicle and people dressed just like those who were struck in the particular case that I'm referring to. Could you have avoided those two pedestrians? At a speed of 35 miles an hour, which was the posted speed on that roadway, if you were the average driver, you would have been about six feet past those two pedestrians after you struck them before you begin to touch your brake. Just because the speed limit says one thing does not mean it's necessarily safe for us to drive at that speed at night. Be safe out there. Be careful when you drive at night. Remember, our eyes are very ineffective. Slow down, take your time, and stay dedicated to the driving task. One of the worst things you could do at night, of course, would be to text and drive. 
not only are you distracted from the driving test task itself, now you've got light in your eye which disrupts your night vision. Don't text and drive. Don't talk and drive. Focus on the driving test.